Hey guys, just wanted to make a video about decal responses. As of Unreal 5, there's been a new feature that hasn't gotten a whole lot of attention, but has some really interesting applications that I wanted to talk about. Um, so decal response is basically a way that you can customize how a material responds to a decal. Normally, when you have a decal in a scene, the color, the roughness, the normals of that decal are applied to the object underneath. So in this case, I've got a red shiny decal meant to represent a liquid, right? Um, and so it is very smooth, has no, no normal uh, surface, and you know, it's just a flat normal. And um, it's obviously red, right? Uh, but the issue with that is that, you know, let's say this is meant to represent a spilled liquid. In reality, when you spill a liquid on a surface, the way that that is going to look depends on the liquid itself, right? Uh, and the surface, right? the, it's how do these two things interact with each other? You can't just say, well, here's the liquid, uh, right? So if we, for example, were to spill liquid on hardwood floor, uh, we'd get, um, you know, a smooth surface. You might see some of the normal detail shining through. Uh, but it wouldn't be perfectly smooth. And uh, depending on how transparent the liquid is, you may or may not be able to see the surface underneath. Uh, but if you were to spill that same liquid on carpet, uh, it wouldn't be nearly as shiny and uh, you'd be able to see the surface details of the fabric underneath because it would be absorbing uh, that instead of just setting on top. Right, so in these materials, I've got a couple of things going on. I'm gonna start with the um, the wood. So this is using a decal response that allows me to control how much the, um, the normal of the wood is visible through the surface. So if we uh, make the surface normal fully visible, you get an effect that looks much more like red paint, right, because at this point, now we have a shiny surface, but all of the details of the underlying surface are visible. And as we turn up this uh, normal flatness parameter, uh, now none of the details of the underlying surface are showing through, and it looks like a you know pl you know plastic coating on top. Uh, but if we go somewhere in between, we can still see some of the details of the surface underneath, and still get a smoother looking um, surface. Whereas with the carpet, um, it's a very different thing going on here. In this case, um, I don't want to use the same color. I'm choosing to use a darker color to show it kind of soaking into these um, this darker fabric. So I've got, in this case, a custom color set up, although you could just sample and darken the color um, instead. And I'm also, changing the roughness. I don't want it to be nearly as smooth, right? So I could make this very glossy, very saturated, but in reality, we want to make it appear as though these fibers are absorbing some of this um, liquid, maybe not all of it so that it's perfectly rough. But if we go to, you know, like that, we get a bit of sheen. It clearly looks like there's some liquid in here. Um, but it doesn't get nearly as smooth as it would on a, a surface, right? So we can create these unique responses using this debuffer node. And there's a couple of different things that this node can do, uh, but you can sample the base color of a decal, the world normal of the decal, and the roughness, metallic, and specular in channel C. So it's got these three channels, uh, as well as the alpha uh, on all of them uh, that it can sample. So in this case, I'm sampling um, the alpha and using that to decide where I want to apply the normal map, um, or in this case, the uh, changes in details. But if you want to use this, you need to go into your uh, materials details panel here, and you'll find a setting decal response debuffer. And depending on what you set this to will give you different levels of control, right? So by default, it'll be set to normal color roughness. And this means that all of the debuffer channels are going to apply to the material and it's not going to do any custom response at all. Uh, next, you have color, 
right? That's going to apply only the color from the debuffer, but it's not going to apply the normal or the roughness. What this means is that you can then sample the debuffer manually and use that to apply the normal and roughness as you choose. Or if you were to choose none, it would apply none of them, and then you would have complete control over how your normal roughness and um, uh, color are being applied. So you can make a decal do completely different things depending on the type of surface that it hits in any of these different buffers. Uh, so another example of that is gonna be this um, down here. What I've got going on here is a decal that basically is ask, acting as a mask. I'll show it to you here over on this with this bottom left one has no custom response, which so just shows whatever the decal actually is. So it's just a bit of a, a gradient mask and it acts like a UV light. So if I turn off this um, directional light, you can see that wherever the decal is being shined on, um, but only on this um, surface that's been specially designed for it, it will make it emissive and the response from that decal is, you know, to show this emissive texture, right? So it's sampling where is this decal and where this decal happens to be, uh, make that emissive, but um, without that decal there, it's just gonna show the normal texture, which is the carpet. So you could use this to have like UV light special effects in a game if you wanted to, um, you know, have a detective game or something. It also does something really powerful with normal maps. So one problem you might have found with decals is that the normals only project in the direction that it's facing, right? So if you apply a normal map with a decal and it's on the ground, then this looks fine, right? This is exactly what we'd expect to be. And if I go over into my buffer visualizer for my world normal, this looks fine, right? We've got our ground pointing up and then the decal uh, is altering that. It's overlaying that by default. But the problem is if we try to apply this to an object that isn't oriented in the exact same direction as our decal, we get this, right? So it's basically applying the, the decal. Uh, this is using just a kind of a simple triplanar uh, mapping. Um, so it's just applying that decal uh, on all of the sides exactly the same. And this is because the decal doesn't know what the surface tangents and um, you know the tangent space of the the mesh underneath it is, and this is a big problem if you're trying to use normal maps uh, and your surface points in more than just one direction, right? Uh, in this case, it would work fine for the upward direction, but we'd actually need to use different decals for each side. Uh, but we can circumvent that by allowing the underlying mesh to sample this normal and then apply it in its own material instead uh, using the decal response. So in this case, I've got a triplanar decal material. It's basically taking the world normal uh, that it's sampling and then uh, using the absolute world position to generate uh, you know, the, the UVs, but you do need to do a bit of inverting on some of the vectors for this to work properly with normal maps, uh, I found. But um, basically, you get this output that looks like this, right? But rather than using this as a normal, which if we go back to our lit view, what you'll find is that because of the way this is, it's totally wrong. Like if I do this, you can just see how utterly messed up this normal is. Uh, but if instead we allow that normal to be passed through onto our receiving mesh uh, material, right, we apply this. Now we have a normal map that can be taken in by our mesh by receiving material and taken into its tangent space because the mesh material itself does have tangents that it can respond to and let that apply its own normals 
now we have something that looks correct. And you can see that as I move the light around here, uh, this is responding correctly to the sun. Whereas this is just, it's fine from above, but if we go to the side here, let's, let's get some side lighting. You can see uh, that it, it's got all sorts of weird artifacts going on uh, from the normals being applied incorrectly. So this basically allows you to convert world space decal normals into tangent space uh, mesh normals. Uh, and just to show you, this is this is um, triplanar mapped, right? And if I bring it outside of the influence of the decal, in this case, um, it's going to mess up the normals on this material because it doesn't have um, any. But if we were to just maybe. we can put it back to default. So we can see how that's working. So basically the way that this works is when you create your decal material. So if I go to, let's just go to my regular decal, right? This is working like normal. This is just a, a sphere decal. It's taking the absolute position and the world position, getting the difference and using that to generate a sphere. Right. There's nothing special about the decal itself. And if you apply it to any mesh that does not have any customized decal response, it's going to output that like normal. Uh, but when you go into this material, such as this uh, receiver material, and you change this debuffer response, in this one, I want it to accept the color, just for the sake of example, right? the color of the, the decal, so you can see it's getting the uh, the color of the decal, but it isn't accepting the normal of the decal because those normals wouldn't be in tangent space. But by basically sampling that normal as a texture and then applying it in the mesh's tangent space, we can get correct normals. Um, and in this case, we also don't really care about the um, the roughness, but you could, for example, you could set this to color and roughness if you had a roughness map of the, the decal you were trying to use. Um, there's a lot of potential uses for this. Um, so hopefully this inspires you to try out some different things and think about ways that you can improve your decal workflow. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.